Um, myasthenia gravis belongs to the class of autoimmune disorders in which a component of our body, and in this particular case, the nerve muscle junction has been misidentified as non-self. And the result is that the body is attempting to reject that, much like if someone receives a transplanted organ, that organ is not them, the body recognizes it and is designed to get rid of it. We don't know the absolute trigger and what turns this disease on. It's a disease that's been recognized since the 1600s, where anatomist Sir Thomas Willis made beautiful observations of individuals with classic symptomatology of myasthenia. But really the modern day as an autoimmune disorder did not occur until the mid 1970s. So from that aspect, it's a fairly new disease uh, to us. It's characterized by fluctuation of weakness. This fluctuation can occur hour by hour, day by day, week by week. It can be made worse and often is by activity. And so someone takes up a task using their arms over their shoulders and within minutes uh, becomes uh, weak. And so they must put the arms down and rest. And then they recover that strength to restart the task and it comes back. Predominantly the eyes are involved with droopy eyelids, double vision, but any muscle that we voluntarily control is at risk for weakness. And so patients present in some instances with difficulty with speech or chewing or swallowing or walking or climbing or using their arms, typing, writing, to say nothing of the blurred vision or double vision because there's misalignment of, of eye movements, uh, et cetera. Our diagnosis is first and foremost a clinical one with a very thorough history and physical examination by a skilled neuromuscular expert. And we confirm this clinical diagnosis through several means. One is to look within the blood for antibodies that are designed to attack these receptors that I spoke about at the neuromuscular junction. We find those in probably 80% of our patients, of which there are several forms, and we can come back to that. We confirm it by uh, looking at the electrical properties of nerve muscle communication. And there are two major tests that are often done. Uh, one is called repetitive nerve stimulation in the community. And at major medical centers, we use another technique called single fiber MG, where we actually record the time it takes for one nerve cell to communicate uh, with the muscle itself in terms of millionths of a second. And we can use that as a tool to monitor progress of disease. And then occasionally we see how people respond to a particular therapy. And so we use a class of drugs called cholinesterase inhibitors. And in the old days, when I was in training, it was a tensilon test where we injected the substance into your vein. And within a minute, people had improvement uh, in their strength and then it would rapidly wear off. That drug is no longer available but we have oral forms of the drug that we can prescribe and then look at over the course of several days to see if one improves. And so that's the disease in a nutshell and, and that's our diagnostic algorithm per se.